Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. In today's video, we will be building a dog versus cat classification system using transfer learning. Transfer learning is a very important concept in deep learning where we use pre-trained models in order to uh, you know build our use cases. So in this case, we will be using a pre-trained model called as MobileNet V2 where we will train that particular model on images of dogs and cats and in turn this model can tell you whether an image represents a dog or a cat. Okay, so this is what we are going to discuss in this particular video. So first of all, let's try to understand what this transfer learning is and later I'll explain you what is the workflow that we are going to follow for this use case and later on we can move on to the hands-on part where we will build this uh, you know, system using Python. So first of all, let's try to understand what this transfer learning is. So transfer learning is again a deep learning technique where we use a pre-trained model. So this pre-trained model is trained for one task and can be retrained for a similar task when you have a smaller data set. Okay, so this is what transfer learning is. So it is all about using a pre-trained model. So when I say pre-trained model, so this model has been trained already on a particular data set. So it has some weights on it and later, we use this model and we train this with a different data set but the only difference is that you can also have a smaller data set. So when you train a model from scratch when you have a smaller data set you cannot like achieve good accuracies. So this is like other reason why we go for transfer learning as well. So it gives you higher accuracies compared to training model from scratch like in most of the cases you can like achieve like good accuracies. And uh, the thing is like it is trained on a data set again it should be used for a similar task so you cannot take a nlp model and like use it for image recognitions and things like that so it should be a similar task only difference is that you are training it on a, a bit different data so say for example if you have built a model and trained it on some image recognition task so you can take that model train it with some different data set which is again a, a image recognition so in this uh, use case and in this video we will be taking the mobile net v2 model and we will be training that with uh, images of dogs and cats as i've told you okay so this is what we are going to do and again when we say transfer learning there are like different and famous transfer learning models like pgg16 so all these are like a like few examples of pre-trained models that are available so we have this vgg16 which is a very famous image recognition model and then we have this resnet 50 inception v3 and so on so in this video we will be using this mobile net v2 which is more of a lightweight model okay and uh, we also have this yolo which stands for you only look once so it is like mainly used for object detection tasks and so on so similarly we have like uh, these pre-trained models which we can access okay so this is this all about transfer learning and now let's try to understand the workflow that we, are, we will be following so as we know that the first step is to collect the appropriate data. So in this case, we need images of dogs and cats and for that we will be using Kaggle API in order to extract the data from Kaggle. So that is the first step. So once you have this data, so we know that the next step is this uh, data processing. So in this, we will be doing some image, uh, you know, processing techniques like uh, we have to reshape these images and we have to like, uh, like convert them into NumPy arrays and so on. So this is like the major step in this use case. So once you uh, do all these image processing tasks, we can then split this data into training data and test data. So the end result is that uh, you have like set of dog images and the respective labels and then you have cat images and the respective labels for those cat images. And then we will split this data into training data and test data and we know that we use this training data to train our model and test data in order to evaluate our model. And then you feed this data to a pre-trained mobile net model. So again, you can use different models as well. But in this case, we'll be using this mobile net V2 model. So once we train this with a smaller data set that we have, we will be, uh, you know, having a mobile net model that is like trained on top of this dog versus cat data set. And uh, we will also like evaluate this model with the test data that we have. And later, when you feed a dog image or a cat image, it can tell you what particular thing that is so it will tell you whether it is a dog or a cat so this is what we will be doing okay so i hope like everyone is clear until this part and now let's move on to the hands-on part so we will be doing all this coding in google collaboratory so i have my google collaboratory uh, setup open here so uh, just go to google and search like dog versus cat data set so let me just type it here so dog versus cat uh, data set kaggle so this will take you to this site. So this is the dog versus cat competition. So this is the data set that we'll be using. 
so here you can go to this data so you can just go through it in order to understand about this data and like what are all the tasks that you can do so go to this data and here you can find this api so this is the api that we have and we will use this api in order to extract this data set to uh, you know uh, our google collab environment so you can see the size of this data set here so i'll go here so this pip install kaggle will you know install the kaggle library but it will already be pre-installed in this google collab environment so next is uh, we have to get this uh, like kaggle.json file so that you can find in your accounts so here you can see you see your account details so there go to your account so there you will see this create new api token so once you click this a file will be downloaded which is nothing but kaggle.json which contains your account credentials so then you need to upload that kaggle.json file into your uh, collab environment so i'll go to this files and i'll try to upload this file so it is in my uh, you know in my desktop i have a folder called this kaggle json file so this is the file that i have downloaded so similarly download your file and make sure you have like verified your account with your phone number or your email address so then only like this will work so then i'll like run this so this will stay common so we are just basically configuring the path of this kaggle.json right so you can just copy this uh, code snippet and you can like use it so i'll run this cell and now we can import this data set from kaggle so i'll just create a text here and i'll name this as importing the uh, dog versus cat data set that's it from kaggle okay so uh, here we need to give the kaggle api to import the data so that we have seen here right so we have to go to this data just a second so there you will find this api so you can click this uh, copy api command and now we can paste it here so before that we have to include uh, an exclamatory mark and then paste your uh, api command so now i'll run this so this will download this dog versus cat data set into my collab environment and this is the data that we will be using which contains uh, you know several thousand images of dogs and cats so it will take few like few seconds and now we so this will basically download this data set in a zip file okay so all these three files will be uh, in a compressed zip file and now we have to extract that okay so this has like uh, downloaded this file so you can see this here so this is uh, dogs versus cats dot zip so if you wanted to print that uh, uh, files at here you can just mention ls which basically list all the files in your directory so we have this dogs versus cats dot zip so this is the data set that we'll be working on now let's extract this file so i'll mention this as extracting the compressed file which is basically the data set okay now uh, there is a library called a zip file so from this zip file library i'll import this function called as same zip file so here uh, this is it and f should be in caps and now we have to give the path of this data set so data set is equal to so it's basically the path so you can either put this docs versus cats dot zip or you can also paste the full path so you know both will work because this will just take the current directory that you are in so the best thing that you can do is like copy this path always so i'll just replace it so again both of this will work so i'll paste the entire uh, you know path and now i'll say with this zip file uh, in this bracket i have to say data set data set comma r so we are reading this data set and let's read this as a zip so again this is a variable you can give any name and now i am going to say zip dot extract all so this will extract all the files that is present in this uh, you know zip file and now uh, once this is extracted i'm going to print a statement so i'm just going to say the data set is extracted let's put this in quotes okay so first we need to import this uh, function from zip file then mention the path then uh, we are like opening this file and reading this as a zip and then we are extracting this so these are like the basic steps that we do
so this will like uh, do this extraction and if you look at this data we have this three files so one is the sample submission.csv so this is basically to submit the uh, you know predictions that is made so we don't need the sample submission and this test.zip but we are interested in this train.zip uh, file so we need to do the same extraction for this train.zip so I'll go to this files you can see that here so we have this test uh, sample submission.csv test one and train zip right so now I have to do the same thing this extraction process for this train.zip so I'll copy this code and now I'll replace this uh, dogs versus cats.zip with this train.zip so I'll copy this path and replace it here okay so now ext let's extract this so this will basically give you a folder that has images of dogs and cats which are you know jpg files or png files so we can like uh, analyze that later yeah so this has uh, uh, like uh, extracted the file so you can see a folder called a string so you can like expand this but this will take few minutes because like there are several thousand images so it will like take few seconds and now uh, in order to count the files that are there in this directory you can like do something like this so i'll import uh, you know os library and now we are going to count the number of files there are so it's taking some time so i'll just like close this let's like see this here as well so counting the number of files in train folder so this train folder is something that we have imported right so from train folder and now i have to create like uh, you know two things so we have to create this path and uh, directories and files so here i can say uh, next so these are like the conventional code that we use so there is like nothing complicated in it so i'll use this os.walk and here i have to give the path of this train uh, train folder so i'll copy the path let's paste it here and uh, i'll create another variable called as file count so this will basically create like uh, this path directories and so on and this will uh, create this list so this files is basically the list that contains like all those file names i'll say uh, file count the file count is equal to i'm finding this length of files so it will tell you like how many files are there in this particular directory and later we can also print like number of images the so number of images in this train directory and this is equal to so we can print this here so let's say file count So it says like there are totally 25,000 images. Okay. So again, we won't be using all these uh, images because we are using a pre trained model. So I'll just take a small sample of this and we can like uh, train our pre trained model. Okay. And now let's try to print the image like name of this image files. So I'll create a text and name this as uh, printing the name of images. So I'll create. A variable called as file names which is basically a list and I'm going to use this OS so we are we have imported this OS directory OS library right and I'm going to say OS uh, dot list dir so this will like list all the files in a directory and it will basically create a python list and here I'll you know paste this path which is contain uh, sorry content train and uh, I'll print this file names okay sorry so we have to include an underscore here so these are the name of the files that are present here in this string okay and uh, we, as you can see we have dog images as well as cat images so in some cases you will receive a data set where these two classes are present in separate folder but in this case we can see both the class of images that is dog and cat uh, are present in the same folder okay so we have to like do some processing within that itself so these are the files that are uh, in this like uh, particular uh, you know folder so now let's do this processing so the next step is let's try to import all the required libraries that we need so this will be um, Importing the dependencies. Okay. 
So first let me import a numpy library as emp and I'm going to import from pill. Let's import image. So pillow is a library which is like used a lot in this image processing tasks. So I'll import that as well. And next I'll import a matplotlib dot pyplot as plt so we need this again to do some image processing to display uh, you know the images that we have and so on and then from the same matplotlib library let's import a different module which is matplotlib dot image so we can import this as mpimg again this is the convention that we use for this module and then we will import a train test split from sklearn dot model selection From this, we are going to import train test split. Okay, so from sklearn.model selection train test split, and finally, I'm going to import from uh, google.collab.patches import cv2 im show. Okay, so uh, this is basically we have a function called as im show in uh, cv2 library which is open cv. So that uh, cv2 dot im show won't work in Google Collab environment. So as an alternative, we have the cv2 underscore im show in this Google dot Collab dot patches which basically do the same thing. So it will like display the image. So that is the purpose. So let's like run this cell to import all the libraries. And apart from this, we need this TensorFlow Keras in order to you know build our model. So that we will import later. So now uh, the next thing that we are going to do is like display the images. Okay, so we have this dog image, cat image and so on, right? So we are going to display these images. So I'll create a text here and say displaying the images of dog and cats. So we will like take this particular files and we will like uh, display this using this uh, like matplotlib library. So first thing we are going to display dog image okay so here i'll create a variable as img and now i'm going to say mp img which is our uh, you know matplotlib dot image which we have imported here so mp img dot im read so this will read the image file and the image file that i'm going to read is this you know some some of these files so i'll go to this files so you can try opening this i'll copy the path and paste it here and after this, so we know that these are all the name of the files that is present in this train, right? So I can just, uh, you know, put this name here. So I'll just take this dog 8298.jpg. Okay. So this is th these files we know that are present in this train uh, folder, right? So I'll paste it here. So this will read this file uh, in this variable called as IM IMG. And now we can create another variable called as IMG plot. So this is to display the images in this uh, like output cell itself. So here I'm going to say plt dot show img, and then I can like I think we can do this as plt dot show itself. Let's see whether it is working. So first we are reading this through this mp img dot im read, and we are like dis displaying this through this matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. So let's run this. Okay, so seems we have to load this to a variable. So I'll just say this as img plot img plt is equal to plt dot show of this image, and then we can say plt dot show. Let's run this. And the truth value of it more is ambiguous. So seems there is an error. So let me just check. So mp img. PLT dot okay okay so this should be plt dot im show so as we can see here this will display the images of the dog that we have so similarly you can take a different uh, file and you can just read like replace this here so that's that will like display the images of the dog or cat that you are working on and now let's try to do the same thing but let's try to you know uh, display the image of a cat okay so
So here, uh, let's copy the name of some cat file. So here we have cat dot four five four three five two. So I'll copy this particular file name. And let's paste it here. So this should be a cat image, right? So let's see. Okay. Here you can see this. So similarly, we have images of dogs and cats. So I'll just uh, replace this with cat image. Okay. So the main thing that we have to note here is we have 25,000 images that we know, but all these images are of different shapes and sizes. So this is, you can see, uh, the x axis size is. 450 or 500 or something so in this case it's like 400 or something so all the images are of like different size so this is a very important thing to note because while you're training your neural network all the images should be of same size and uh, for our case we are going to use the model called as this mobile net v2 and it kind of uh, you know needs the images in a specific uh, you know shape which is like 224 into 224 pixels so that means like uh, x axis length should be 224 pixels and this y axis length should be 224 pixels so that is uh, one main thing and we have to take all these images and resize all these images to the set pixel so then only the model can like read this data so that is one thing and if you want you can also convert this rgb images so we have already discussed in a different video on what these rgb images are basically the colored images so if you want you can take this colored image as well uh, if not you can convert these images to grayscale images which are uh, black and white images so these images will be smaller in size so your training will take a uh, place in a short period of time so that is like the other processing that we can do but in this case we will just go with the rgb images itself so these are some of the data processing or this image processing tasks that we do okay so the main thing is to resize all the images to a common size so common pixel value that is the other thing okay so uh, next what we can do is like resize all these images as i've said so i'll create a text file so similarly you can like print uh, and see like different images of this dogs and cats using this particular uh, file name so now i'll create another thing as resizing um, all the images now in this case uh, we can directly resize these images, store it some, store it in some NumPy arrays, uh, and, and then like train your model from it and so on. But in this case, what I'm going to do is create a different directory, resize all these images, and put those images there. Okay, so that is what I'm going to do in this case. So because I let's say I want a copy of this original images as well as the resized images. So in this case, you can follow this uh, particular step where we save these resized images. And as I've told you, we are using a transfer learning technique where we use pre-trained models. So I'm going to reduce the number of images that we need. So we totally add like 25,000 images, right? So here you can see. So I'm not going to, so it's probably like there are 12,500 cat images and 12,500 dog images. So you can like see this somewhere here. I think it is mentioned here. So, so let me just go to this overview. Okay, so I think here it is. So the training contains 25,000 images of dogs and cats. Not sure whether some information are there. Okay, so we can also, you know, uh, calculate this by, you know, a simple for loop. Let's do that. So I'll create a code cell here. So now what I'm going to do is we know that this file names is a list that contain the name of all the images right so now i'm going to take this file iterate through a for loop and find like how many dog images and how many cat images are there so we know that all the dog uh, images are like named with this dog dot some number and cat images are named with this like uh, cat dot some number right so here i'll create a for loop so i'll just create the same uh, you know list here so that it's like clear for you so that it doesn't like uh, confused like once you're going through this code so we have this file name so this this is basically a list that contain all the images of this dogs and cats so i'm going to save for uh like file or let me just say this as for image file in file names so we are iterating this list which contain the image like the name of the files of dogs and cats so this image file is nothing but a list so uh, let, let's just print this like five times mm. so let's say for 
i in uh, range length of file names i am going to say uh, print this file name sorry so it should uh, so file names which is the list and we can like mention the index so this will like print the name so i'm going to print the first five files so for i in range okay so let's not put this as i in range so let's put this as for i in range of five so this for loop will run for like five times so uh, here we can say i think we can run this so this will print the first five files there are now this will like give this right so these are basically string values and now what i'm going to do is like uh, create another variable called as name so name is equal to file names of file so each time this for loop runs this will take the uh, you know name will take the this names okay and now i'm going to print the first three letters so name of 0 to 3 yeah so this will give us this dog cat so the basically the first three letters now we can count this uh, you know using this so uh, here i'll say this file name again you don't have to like run this every time this file name so it will be the same but i'll just create this list here now i'm going to say for uh, image file in file names so each time this image file will take the name of the file that we have and now i'm going to create a variable called as name so name is equal to so let's say image file of 0 to 3 so the first three letters and if this first three letters so if this name is equal to dog so i'm going to create a count so let's create a counter so i'll call this as dog image count as dog count is equal to zero so let's initiate it with zero and let's say cat count is equal to zero so we are basically doing this to calculate like how many dog images are there and how many cat images are there so nothing like complicated here so when the name is dog so i'm going to say uh dog count plus is equal to 1 so i'm just incrementing it with 1 so if every time there is uh, the name of the file starts with this dog so this dog will be incremented by a value of 1 and then we can include a else condition where we know that the name should be like cat so here i'll say cat count uh, plus equal to 1 okay and finally we can just print this so print number of uh, dog images is equal to dog count and similarly we can do this for this cat images as well so this is number of cat images okay so i'll run this so see as we can see so it basically contains equal number of uh, dog images and equal number of cat images but we are not going to take all this like 25,000 images so we are just going to take like 2,000 or 3,000 images and then like take those images and resize those images alone because we are not going to use all these images so it doesn't make sense uh, of like taking all these images and resizing it so first I'll create a directory so creating a directory for these resized images okay so here you can just create a new directory as like this new folder or something so instead you can use this os library so i'll just say os.mkdir so this is nothing but make directory so here i'll say this path which is this content okay so for like should be forward slash content so i'll say uh forward slash content and again slash i'll name this to image resized okay so this is the folder where we are going to store like all the uh, resized images so i'll run this so now this will create a directory called as image resized here 
right so this is so this is basically a empty directory now and now we are going to save all the resized images in this particular directory so that will be the next step so i'll uh, create another variable as original directory or let's name this as original folder which is the train folder which contains all the uh, images with that original uh, shape so i'll copy this path of this train paste it here and then i'll create another variable as resized folder so here let's paste the path of this image resized path so let's copy the path paste it here okay now we know that uh, like we have to iterate through this files name list right so it is basically a list that contains the name of the files so similarly we are just going to iterate only the first 2000 images so here we have like iterated through the entire thing and found that totally there are like 25000 images but i'm not going to do that so i'm just going to run this for loop for uh, like 2000 times so that it will extract me only 2000 images so i'll say for i in range of 2000 so this for loop will run like 2000 times and each time i have to take a file mm. I'll say file name just a file name is equal to os uh, dot list directory so this is we have already seen this so this will like list all the files in a folder so what I'm going to list is this original folder this content train so this will like do nothing just do what is what we have like done here so this will create a list that contains like all the names of the image files so once i create this i'll give this as image path so image path is equal to this original folder plus file name okay so and again so the main thing here is we have to include a forward slash here here as well so let me tell you what this does so first uh, this is nothing but the original folder right so original folder is the path of the train folder but what we are interested in is finding the path of the image which is nothing but this one so content train and this image uh, name so here it is like content train doc point eight two nine eight all these things right so this is what this image path will do so first it will take this original folder and concatenate the name of the file okay so that is what we are doing and uh, so it should be original folder of i original folder i because like each time this for loop runs it will take one file okay so the uh, let's let's try to understand this so this for loop is running for the first time so this file name is equal to os dot list directory of i that means uh, os list directory of zero so this will uh, take this image name which is doc.120671.jpg and now we will like add these two things so that will be stored file name uh, stored here and this will concatenate these two things so this path name and this image name so the second time this for loop runs so it will take the name of the second file which is cat.111189.jpg so that uh, will be stored in this file name and then we are like concatenating it with original folder plus file name so we are just doing this in order to give the path of all these individual files so once you have this path now we can resize it so i'll create a variable as image img and i'm going to use this image.open so this image.open is nothing but the function that we have in pillows library so which we have like imported here so from pill like we are importing this image so from this we can like open this image and resize it so uh, image.open so i'll copy this image path and paste it here okay so later i'll say image uh, is equal to img dot resize so again as i've told you mobile net expects the images to be in the size like 224 comma 224 and this is like the uh, like pixel range like the most of the pre-trained model has okay so you have to say image dot resize open parenthesis and within another parenthesis mentioned 224 comma 224 so this is the uh, it's kind of the horizontal number of pixel and vertical pixels that we have and then i can say image is equal to img dot convert rgb okay and now i'll say new image path so this new image path is equal to 
this resized folder. So we have to save this in this new uh, folder that we have created, right? So resized folder plus file name. Okay, later we can save. So we are just saving that with the same file name. So the only difference is that the directory changes. So it will be saved in this image resized. So new image path, and then I'll say img uh, dot save of new image path. So yeah, so that is also let's try to understand this for loop. So first we are uh, creating two variables with the name of the original folder which contain like all the original images which are not resized and then we are creating a directory here which is uh, called as image resize which will contain all the images that we are going to resize and now I'm creating a for loop that will run for 2000 times. So each time this for loop runs this file name variable takes the name of each individual image file so that is what we have mentioned this. So i is basically the index of this list which gives you the name of the file then we are uh, like creating this variable called this image path where we are concatenating this path and this uh, file name so that's what I have mentioned here so folder original folder plus file name so this is basically the individual path that we take so each time the for loop runs so image path is the full path of a image so we take that image pass that to this image dot open which will like read this file and then we are resizing this using this resize so again this resize is present within this pillow library so we are opening this image using this image dot open then resizing it to size of 224 comma 224 so if you wanted to convert this image to a size of 200 comma 200 you can like mention it here and then uh, image dot rgb convert which basically tells you that colored image so this is again a mandatory thing and then once you have resized this we have to save this image right so i'm giving this new image path which is nothing but this resized folder so make sure you are including this forward slash at this end otherwise it won't work and then we are like saving this image so let's run this so this will probably take a minute or two because like as we have like several images it takes some time so here we are like resizing 2000 images so once we resize this image let's try to uh, like display the images and see whether all the images are of same uh, you know shape so like what we have did here so i'll copy this cell so let that code run i'll paste it here so this is for resized images of dogs and cats so display dog image so I'll name this as display resized dog image and here it should be this path this uh, image resized path is where our new files will be stored so i'll copy this and paste it here okay so this cell like completed running so all the 2000 files will be uh, resized and it will be stored here in this image resize so now let's print this So here you can see so the size is like almost it's 224 and it is like 224 here previously it was like something around uh, 450 and 400 or something right so this is how you can like resize this images and let's try to do the same thing for this cat image as well so previously we know that uh, these two images are of different uh, shapes or size so basically the dimensions and now let's try to do this for the resized cat image resized cat image and now I'll just copy this image resized. So this will also contain the image in the dimension of 224, 224. Let's, let's try this. See, so it's like 224 and 224. So both these images are of like same dimensions. So like all the files, all the image files in this image resized will contain the images in, the, in their resized formats. Okay. So you can like again. Uh, display different images and you can like recheck here so the next thing that we have to do here is like create labels for this images so we have this uh, dog image and cat image right so i'm going to uh, create like labels for this and you cannot like randomly create like zeros and ones here so let's say that we are going to uh, label this cats in, as a zero and this dogs as zero so how i'm going to create this labels is go through this image resized and check whether the image starts with the dog if the image file start with dog so i'll uh, you know label it as one if it if the name starts with uh, uh, you know cat i'll name label it as zero so that's what we are going to do so this is for creating the label so i'll create a text here and say as uh, creating labels for resized images of dogs and cats 
okay i'll just put this in bold and uh like i'll take all the cat images and label them to zero and in the case of dog let's label them to one okay so you can like change this to yz so, so you can label cats to one and dogs as zero so that will like work as well so how we are going to do this is uh create a for loop that will like iterate through this uh, image resized folder so if the file name start with starts with the doc we have to label it as one if the file name start with cat we have to label this as zero so similarly like what we have done here so in this case so we have like uh like iterated this for loop through this list and check whether the first three letters is dog or a cat right so here we have just found the uh, count of dogs and cats so in so similarly we are just going to create the labels as well so I'll just mention a comment as creating a for loop to assign labels for these images. Okay, so I'll create a list called as labels, and this is a empty list. So this is where we will like append all the labels. And here I'll say for i in range 2000. So because we know that we totally have 2000 images, and I'm going to say file name it's basically the same that we have did here so file name is equal to names of i so again i'll create a list like this okay so let's create a list so the main thing is you shouldn't like mention train but mention this image resized path we will copy this path okay so file names os dot list directory labels for i in range 2000 and uh, so file names is file names so it will be file names so it, this is what i have mentioned here so each time the for loop runs so this file name will take uh, the names of that individual file and then i'll create this as label so label is equal to file name of 0 is to 3 which basically tells you whether it is a dog or cat so like uh, what we have did here so we are just checking whether it is a dog or a cat so we are just slicing this string okay so label is equal to this file name and then we are, now we can introduce a if condition so if this label is equal to dog in that case we can say labels so labels this labels is nothing but this list okay so or else i'll just yeah so let it be labeled so i can say labels dot append one and now i'll include a else condition and say labels dot append zero okay now let's try to understand like what happening here first we have like did this like several times so i'm creating a variable which is basically a list so it's it contains a list of all the names of the images of this dogs and cats so once i have this uh i'm creating another empty list called as labels so this is where i'm going to store like all the labels for i in range 2000 so this for loop runs like two like 2000 times so for the first time i will take the value of 0 then 1 2 3 and so on so this will go on until like uh, 1 triple 9 and each time i mention this uh, file names of i so file name will take the name of a file so each individual file and i'm creating a variable called as label so this label is nothing but the first three letters of that file say for example when we uh, run this for loop for the first time so we take this file name and then slice this first three letters okay so when it is a dog file name so this will extract this dog when it is a cat file it will like uh, again slice the first three values which is this cat okay so i'll also try to you know print this as well so okay so let's do one thing so we are just slicing it so if that sliced string is dog we will append one if it is not we will append zero so this basically tells you whether it is a dog or cat so let's run this and now i'll just print the first five files here so file names of zero to five print file names 
so we have this dog cat uh, and all the things and so on so if you go here so 12067 it's probably the same order or the order may change but like we are not sure about that so we have this file names image resize now uh, you can also like check the number of files okay so I'll remove this and say length of file so totally there would be like 2000 images right now i'll print this labels so it should be done here so the only difference is that now we are finding this for labels so as we can see if it is a dog uh, the label is one if it is a cat the label is zero so this is what we have done here so we take each file name slice the first three letters so if those three letters is dog we will append one to this label list if it is not we will append zero to this label list so this is how it works so uh, the training data for our neural network is all these images of dogs and cats these 2000 images and the labels will be this particular list whether it is a one or a zero so here i've printed only the first five elements so but it totally contains like 2000 elements as we can see here okay so you can now uh, count how many dog images and how many cat images are there because we have just took the first 2000 uh, values like 2000 images or something so we know that in total it is like distributed as 12500 dog images and cat images but we have to check whether the distribution is equal in this case as well so this is for uh, so within this 2000 images i'm going to count how many dog images and cat images are there so for that so i'll just mention a comment as counting the images of dogs and cats in uh, or dogs and cats out of 2000 images okay so for that uh you can just say values comma counts is equal to np dot unique so this np numpy we know that numpy np is a numpy library and there we have this unique uh, function that will tell you like how many unique values are there so in this case unique values are one and zero so here we have to pass the labels list and say return counts is equal to true now i'll print this values and also the counts okay so this tells us like zero which means like cat images are 992 and dog images are like 1008 so total you have this 2000 images so the distribution is like almost even so it is like we don't have like 500 cat images and 1500 dog images and so on so it's like almost equal so we don't have to worry about this so if the distribution is uneven in that case you have to like uh, you know build a for loop differently here where uh, there can be like even split of this dogs and cats but if this 992 and 1008 is like uh, like we can like work with that so there is no issues here now the next step is to before uh, training our model we have to read all these images and convert them to numpy array so that will be the next step okay because we know that our models cannot understand images but they understand numbers so we have to take all these images and convert them to arrays and i have also like explained in the previous videos on how this image processing works and and how to extract this pixel values and convert that to numpy array so if you have not watched those videos i'll just give you the link of those videos in this uh, video description you can just check that out so here i'll just create another text as converting all the resized images to numpy arrays okay so here i'll import cv2 which is uh, the open cv library and we need another library called as glob blob okay so these are the two things that we need and uh, here we just given the directory which contain all these resized images so we will read all the images here and convert convert them to numpy arrays so that's what we are going to do so i'll create a variable as image directory so this image directory is nothing but uh, just copy this image resized path and uh, don't forget to mention this forward slash here and then uh, mention this image extension so this is a important thing so it might not be necessary in this case 
but you might need it somewhere else so in some other like data set so i'll mention png and jpg so in this case i think like all the files are in this jpg format uh, here you can see this list i think like all the images are of jpg format but in some data set the images will be in jpg format and png format so in that case uh, like it's better to mention this extension in this list try with these both extensions so in that case it will work so if you have png and jpeg images so if you don't include this line in that case you may get error in your code so i'll create a, a list called as files as empty list and then i'll say um, files dot extend uh, globe dot globe so this is basically to read all the images and they'll say image directory plus so we have to mention an asterisk symbol plus dot so i'll explain you what like why we are doing this so let me just complete this quickly and i have to say for e in image extension okay so after this we can say dog cat images is equal to np dot s array cv2 dot im read file uh, for in files okay so let's try to understand what we are doing here so first we are importing this uh, cv2 and the globe uh, library and then i'm mentioning the image directory which is nothing but the resized image directory which contains 2000 resized images and then i'm uh, mentioning this image extension as well so let me just run this cell so it will take some time so in that meantime i'll explain you what's happening and then we are like creating this uh, empty list called as files and i'm mentioning this files dot extend uh, globe dot globe so it is basically again to uh, like locate that file so image directory plus this asterisk of dot so as i've told you in this case you don't have to do this because all the files are in jpg format so if you have this jpg and png format you can do something like this which is basically to uh, uh, either check whether the file is png or jpg and then like convert it to a numpy array so that's why we use this and we use like a for loop to iterate through this png or jpg so just two things here and then after that we creating this uh, like uh, like a numpy array so i'm just saying this as np dot as array so cv2 dot i am read for file in file so now this file so we are like uh, appending it here so file dot extend is like similar to this extend like appending where uh, we are like taking each file names and then we are like reading this file so reading this file through this cv2 dot i am read which is using this open cv library so after that we are converting all these things into numpy array so this cv2 dot i am read will read an image and convert it to a numpy array so the reason we have this np dot as array is all these images are now in the form of a numpy array and all these numpy arrays will be in a single numpy array so that's why we have this okay so this will uh, take each individual image convert it to numpy array and this will uh, put all those numpy arrays in a single numpy array so that's the reason behind this so i'll just check whether this code is right so just a minute so png files dot extend globe of globe image directory e for e in extension and dog cat images mp dot as array cv2 dot i am read for file inference okay so let's run this so this is the final data that we have which we will like pass it to our uh you know mobile net model in order to train it now i'll just try to print this dog cat images so now all these should be converted to numpy array as you can see here so these are nothing but the pixel values that we have so these are like uh, present in a numpy array so you can also like print the type as well so type of dog cat images so this this is nothing but the data of all those 2000 images not like one single image because we have uh, like 
we enclosed all these image files so we as i've told you so each time this for loop runs so it will take one image and convert it to a numpy array later we put all these files in a single numpy array so it is nothing but this dog cat images now let's check this uh, shape so i'll say print dog cat images dot shape so this will tell you like there are 2000 images and each image is of shape 224 comma 224 pixel and this 3 represents the rgb image so if this value is 1 that means the images are like grayscale images or you won't get a number here at all so that means like the images are converted to grayscale and when you have uh, you know rgb images this 3 will be there so this 3 is nothing but the red green and blue intensity values that are there so we have 2000 images of shape 224 comma 224 and 3 basically represents the rgb images okay so now this is the data that we have so now we take this 2000 images and we take the labels that we have created here so labels is present in this uh, labels uh, list right so we take this and then we will like apply train test split and, and again do the training and all those things okay so i'll just like create two variables as x and y because it is like more convenient so x and y so let's take this dog cat images so i'm just basically renaming uh, the numpy array here and i'm going to take this labels list which contains this one zero and all the things here uh, yeah so i'm just going to take this labels which is in the form of a list and convert it to a numpy array and then store it in this y they'll so say np dot as array Which would be as array np so here we pass this labels okay yeah so this x will now contain the images of dogs and cats and the corresponding labels will be stored in this y and now we can apply our train test split so all the other things are something that we already know so train test split so here the main thing that you can notice the number of images that we take is 2000 which is very small in terms of deep learning right so we often train with like uh, 20000 images or or uh, 100000 images or so on so here i'm just taking a small data set but we'll, we will get a good result as we are using a pre-trained model so like that you can see while we complete our training part so now we have to apply this train to split so i'll create four arrays as we often do so we x train x test y train and y test so this is equal to um, train test split so we have already imported this so if you remember we have imported this train test split function uh, from this sklearn.model selection so we have imported this train test split function so this is what we are like using now so here i have to pass this x and y so x is my data or my images and y is my labels and now i'm going to say test size is equal to 0 0.2 and then uh, i'll say random state is equal to 2 so again in random state you can mention any number so this test size test size is nothing but the size of your test data so test size is equal to 0 0.2 means i want 20 percentage of my uh, images to be test data the remaining 80 percentage will be my training data so out of this 2000 20 percentage will become my test data and out of 2000 80 percentage will be my test data random state uh, is nothing but i have like explained this several times before so if you don't know what it is uh, each time you run this train test split your data will be splitted in a different manner so your train data will contain different images and test data will contain different images so if you want the same split to happen every time you mention the same number here so every time you mention random state is equal to 2 your data will be splitted in a in, in a similar way if you mention 3 every time in that case your data will be splitted in a similar way and so on so this is just to replicate that uh, train test split and once you run this all the training data images will be stored in this x train and all the labels either 0 or 1 will be stored in your y train so the corresponding labels for this x train will be stored in this y train and uh, your test images will be stored in this x test and the corresponding labels will be stored in this y test so let's run this okay and now let's uh, so this process is complete now let's try to you know check the shape of each thing so print x dot shape so this is like the original data set and now i'll print this x train dot shape and x test dot shape 
the x's are original data which contain like 2000 images as we can see so this is the 2000 images and the corresponding shape so this 1600 is nothing but the 80 percentage of data which is my training data and the 20 percentage test data will be is nothing but my 400 data and again we have this 224 comma 224 as the dimension of the images and 3 as the rgb image okay so here i'll just mention that we have 1600 um, training images and 400 test images okay yeah okay so uh, we have like split this training and test images next uh, before uh, training uh, the neural network we have to scale this data okay so i'll create a comment as scaling the data so the scaling is nothing but we have the pixel values like 121 101 uh, you know 8483 and so on so the range is like a, a, a bit higher right so now what i'm going to is do is like scale the data so all the values are in the range of 0 to 255 sorry 0 and 1 so uh, again i explained in that video where i like explained about image processing that your pixel value ranges from 0 and 255 where 0 means it's black color and 255 means it's like uh, like complete white color so all the pixel value will be in this in this range between 0 and 255 now if you wanted to scale this data between 0 and 1 so you need to divide all the values by 255 so that's what we are going to do so let's call this as extreme scaled is equal to x train or uh, you know training data and it's divided by 255 the maximum value and similarly we have to do this for test data as well so this is my x test scaled x test uh, divided by 255 okay so i'll run this so this will take like all these values divided by 255 let's see what is the end result that we are getting so i'll run this now i'll uh, you know print this so this is my training data scale this is my test data scale so this x train and x test are nothing but what we are splitted here so i'll print this x test alone sorry x train uh, scaled alone as you can see the values will be in the range of 0 and 1 so this is what this scaling does now we can build our neural network okay so i'll create a text as building the neural network as i've told you here we will be using a pre-trained model called as uh, mobile net so here i am going to import my tensorflow library so i'll import tensorflow as tf and you can get this uh, mobile net v2 this pre-trained model from tensorflow up so i'll import tensorflow underscore up as uh, up itself so i'll run this okay so this is where this model is so we have to mention this link so this tf hub uh, dev this uh, you know mobile net v2 feature vector under like slash 4 so this is the link for it so i'll create a model name for this let's call this as mobile net model and here we have to mention that path this url okay so i'll copy this url and paste it here so you can just uh, look this url somewhere save this like somewhere you so that you can like use it later so now i'll call this as pre-trained model and we have to mention like some parameters so this pre-trained model is equal to uh up dot keras so this k should be caps so keras uh, layer and in the parenthesis you have to mention the name of the model which is this mobile net model so this will basically like download the models weights and so on the model and then we have to mention the input shape so this input shape is nothing but uh 224 comma 224 which we have like resized comma 3 so this 3 is nothing but it says uh, the images are like rgb images and i'll say trainable is equal to false 
okay so as you can see it's, it's just to tell whether the model is like uh, that particular layer is like trainable or not so i'm uh, taking this mobile uh, model so mention this particular url so this should not change and i'll create another uh, variable called as this pre-trained model so up dot keras layer so this up is nothing but tensorflow up. so mobile net model is nothing but url of the model that we are extracting from this tensorflow up. And the next parameter is this input chip finally we have this trainable yeah okay now we can run this so the as you can see so this will like download this uh, mobile net model and now we can train this so i'll create a variable called as number of classes so number of classes is nothing but how many uh, types of images you have so here we have two types of images right so one is dog and the another one is like cats so here i can say model is equal to tf dot keras dot sequential so we have like already used this before so even when you're like building the model from scratch we use this tf.keras.sequential and within the sequential create a list so mention this uh, square brackets and here i'll say a uh, pre-trained model and uh, this will be my first layer and then finally i need my uh, tf.keras dot layers dot dense so this will be my output layer so here i'll say number of classes so number of classes i mean you can say number of classes or or else you can just mention two here so this like if if you have like three images or uh, three types of images in your data so it should be like three here so that like won't change okay and finally let's print this model summary model uh, dot summary yeah okay so mobile net model the url of this uh, uh, mobile net p2 then pre-trained model is the like variable name up keras layers and all these things so input chip and trainable false and then we have to mention this tf dot keras dot sequential so pre-trained model so again so this uh, mobile net uh, model has a specific architecture so it contains a, a set number of convolutional layers and all the things and so on so the only thing that we need to include is this uh, output layer so in the output layer we have to say how many classes are there in our data set so mobile dot summary so this will tell you what is the layers that you have okay so keras layer so this is for the uh, you know mobile net model that we are using so these are the count of those parameters and so on so you can do some research on this you can go to this tensorflow up you can uh, go to this mobile net v2 and this is the image so as i've told you right earlier that in transfer learning the model will be trained previously on a data set and we can use a similar data set and train uh, in a different use case so go to this image net uh, ils vrc and so on so just search it in google so you can see like uh, the data set on which this model has been trained and if you wanted to learn what is the architecture of this model you can just go to google and search it so it's, it will basically tell you like what are all the different uh, like layers uh, are there in this particular model so if you want you can like uh, create this from scratch as well by mentioning like all these things but uh, again we know that it will take a very long time to train as this prob this data set is probably a very larger one okay so you can do some research on this data set as well as this uh, you know mobile net architecture as well so probably we will discuss later about in detail about like what these individual layers are and how this model works and so on but for now you can do some research on this so this is the thing and now we can compile this model and train this so i'll say model dot compile so here we will like mention what is the loss function we are going to use what is the optimizer and so on so i'll say uh, the So let's say model.compile so optimizer is like the most widely used one which is the adam optimizer and then uh, loss function is something that we have to mention so i'll say loss is equal to tf dot keras dot uh, losses sparse categorical cross entropy so you can like do some again research on what are all the different loss functions there are so tf dot keras okay so it should be keras dot losses dot sparse categorical cross entropy okay so within that i can see from logits is equal to true and the matrix is nothing but we can take this accuracy score so i'll say matrix is 
equal to within list we have to say this ACC which basically tells it's as like the accuracy okay so model dot compile uh, my optimizer is Adam and the loss function is this sparse categorical cross entropy so this is like a normal label encoder so we use this sparse categorical cross entropy so if you use a one not encoder labels in this case we use the simple categorical cross entropy and we have mentioned this matrix is equal to accuracies now let's run this and finally we can train our model so i'll say model dot fit and within this we have to pass our training data which is my x train scaled and uh, my labels okay so i'll just go here so we have to pass this x train scaled and this y train the corresponding labels okay so model dot fit x train so x underscore train scaled comma y train and you can mention epoch so I'll, this will probably take some time but it will give you good results for like five epochs alone so if you want you can like increase this epochs like you can also uh, you know include some more uh, hidden layers and, and see like how your accuracy changes and so on so if you include include more there is a chance that our model might overfit so i'll run this so this will like train our neural network for five epochs and you can see like what is the accuracy that is like uh, taking place here okay so you can in, in the meantime again you can see like what is your loss function value and how your accuracy score is changing okay so this as i've told you will take some time and uh, let's wait until it's trained so i'll just pass this and resume once this training is done okay so this took a time of four minutes in total to train with uh, you know the set 1600 training images which we have like seen here so we totally have like 1600 images so for five epochs we took like uh, uh, four minutes to train this model and you can see this uh, loss function value and the accuracy value so in the first epoch we started with this uh, 91 percentage accuracy so it kind of increased to 97 98 and so on so the final accuracy in the fifth epoch that we got is like 99 percentage which is a very good accuracy for the very small amount of data set that we have taken so this is the advantage while we use like transfer learning or uh, you know the pre-trained models so we know that this is the training data accuracy so that this is not all so we have to do the same thing and find the accuracy for test data as well so i'll create like two variables called a score and acc which is my loss functionality and accuracy score for test data so i'll say model dot uh, evaluate so this model is the uh, model that we have created so model dot evaluate and i'll say x test uh, scaled so this is my test data and i'll pass the uh, x sorry the test data labels as well so what happens here is like the model will predict the labels for this uh, x test images and that will be compared with this uh, y test like the real labels and then we will get this accuracy score and the, uh, basically the loss functionality and the accuracy score and later we can print this as uh, test uh, loss the loss function value and uh, score and the accuracy score value so this will be my test data accuracy which is the most important metric so this test accuracy is equal to ACC okay so this will take few seconds but not like that much time so you can see the accuracy it's it's almost 98 percentage so we can like take this as 97 percentage that means like out of 100 images of dogs and cats our model can correctly predict for 97 images so you can see so test accuracy of 0 0.977 means like 97.7 percentage okay which is a good accuracy so this is how you can train this transfer learning model or basically the pre-trained model of mobile net v2 and uh, you can like build this classification system of dogs and cats so we just have like one more thing to do which is to build a predictive system where if you pass a new image of a dog or a cat our model should say whether it is 
you know zero or one basically whether it is a dog or cat so here i'll create a text as predictive system predictive system so there are like few lines of code that we have to do here so i'll create a variable as input image path and is equal to so let's get this from the user itself so uh, i mean in a more detailed use case so what you can do is build a simple ui in streamlit or flash and uh, you know keep an upload uh, button or something where you can upload an image and in the back end your model can predict whether it is a dog or cat and then you can like deploy that using streamlit or heroku so i'll say path of uh, the image to be predicted okay so path of the image to be predicted and then i'll say input image is equal to so let me just put this as image as well so input image is equal to cv2 dot im so this will basically convert uh, the image so this will read the jpg image uh, into a numpy array so cv2 dot im and within this we have to put this input image path okay so input image path later i'll also display this image as well so for this i'm going to use uh, cv2 underscore im show so note that this is not cv2 dot im show as i've told you previously so there is an im show function in open cv that is cv2 but it won't work so as an alternative from this google dot collab dot patches i'm importing the cv2 underscore im show which is basically the same function so cv2 im show and within that we have to pass this numpy array of input image so uh, what happens is like we mentioned the path of the image for which we need to make the prediction and then we display that image and finally make, make the prediction. So, uh, the next thing that we have to do is like resize the images like what we have done before. So input image resize is equal to um, cv2 so previously we used like pillow to resize similarly you can use this uh, open cv library as well. So I'll say input image and in the next parameter you need to mention what is the dimension that you want which is 224,224 and then this uh, we have to scale this now. So let's call this as input image scaled is equal to this input image resized. divided by 255 so what we have already done now we have to reshape this so let's call this as image reshaped so i'll tell you like what is the purpose of this so let's use np dot reshape hmm. input image scaled comma so in a list i'll mention 1 comma 224 comma 224 comma 3 i'll explain you what this means after completing this so, and then let's create another variable as input prediction so this is where our final prediction will be we'll say model dot predict so here i'll pass this input image or reshape so image reshape input print label for this i'm going to use np.argmax of input prediction okay so now let's try to understand what's happening here so first we need to mention the path of the image so what we will do is upload a new cat image or a dog image and once we run this so this will like ask for the user for the input so there we will paste the path of this image and then uh, we will read this image and load it to a numpy array using the cv2 dot im rate okay so after that we will display that image using the cv2 underscore uh, im show later we will resize the image to this okay so this should not be 224 comma 224 so this should be um, one comma okay sorry just Okay, okay, yes, this is correct. So this is the first reshape that we do. So the image can be like 500 into 500 pixel or 1000 pixel or something. So we are reshaping this to 224 comma 224. Then we are like scaling this image because we know that we want the values to be between 0 and 1. Later, we are reshaping this numpy array. So the reason is 
it is to tell the model that I'm making prediction for only one image. So I mentioned one year and 224 is the dimension of the image, 3 is the RGB image. So this one is nothing but I'm making prediction for only one image. So if you are passing like 3 or 4 images, so you will mention that images here. But here we are like interested in only one image, so I'm mentioning one year. And finally, we can pass this reshaped array to this model.predict and then we can apply this mp.argmax. Okay, so this mp.argmax is nothing but just the prediction. So when you use this model.predict, you will get the prediction probability of whether it is a dog or a cat. Okay, so say for example, uh, the final result will be something like this. So let's say it's 0 0.85 and 0 0.20 or something. So this is like, uh, let me put this as 0 0.15. So this can be any value. So this is 0 0.85 is what is the probability that the label is 0. This is what is the probability of the label being 1. So it is like telling there is a 85 percentage chance that this uh, image is a cat and only 15 percentage chance that it is a dog. So this is the result that you get when you have this model dot predict. Now when you apply this np dot argmax it will see which number is maximum whether it is first number or second number. So here the first number is maximum. So the final value is 0. If the second value is maximum the final value is 1. So this is just basically to uh, have that final prediction in terms of labels. So this model dot predict will give you only this probability value. So we are applying this np dot argmax to find which value is maximum, either the first value or second value. If the first value is maximum, you will get the value as zero. That means it is a cat. If the second value is maximum, that means it is a dog. You will get a one. So later we can say if this input red uh, label is equal to zero. So I'll say, so I'll basically print the image represents a cat. Okay, because that is the label that we have created, right? And else we will say the image represents a dog. Okay. So this is the simple if condition. So you all you have to do is like pass in the path of the image, then it will convert it to numpy array, display the image. Then uh, all this resizing, scaling, and reshaping will happen, and then we finally make this prediction. Okay. So before like uh, doing the prediction, I just wanted to download some dog image and cat image. So I'll just search as dog images. So let me just open this image and download this file. Save images. So I'll just save this in my desktop as dog.jpg. And let's uh, do the same thing for cat as well. So our model should predict this. So cat images. So can just download some image. So as you can see, it can be any uh, dimension because we are anyway reshaping this. So I'll save this as cat.jpg in the desktop itself. So now I'm going to upload these files, dog image and the cat image. So I'll go to this upload. Go to my desktop and I have this e talk and okay so let's upload these two things so once this is completed so I'll run this now first I'll copy the path of a dog this dog.jpg so I'll copy the path and paste it here okay Let's press enter. So this should display the image and give the prediction. So path of the image should be predicted as this dog and we are displaying this dog. So this image is displayed using the CV2 I am sure and this tells the image represents a dog because the prediction that we get is uh, this you know zero. So if you want to understand this clearly I will also print the prediction as well. Let's print input prediction. Let me print this here. And let's print this input red label. I'll show you how this will be. For the same dog image, so I'll paste this here. So here the second value will be okay, okay. So I have to pass like sorry, paste the path. So yeah, this copy path. Okay. 
so this dog image is placed and then you can see so this is the probability of the image being cat and this is the probability of the image being dog as we can see the value is higher for this uh, second value that means the label is one so it says the image represents a dog so this is how this prediction system works so i'll copy this entire thing and i'll test this for cat as well okay so let's run this and now let's copy and paste the path of this cat image So as you can see now the first value is maximum that means the label is zero using np.rmax we have found that and then we say that this image represents a cat so this is how we can build this predictive system okay so uh, i hope like everyone is clear with how we have did all these things here so what i would want you to do from here is like build a simple ui in streamlit or flask and deploy this model so that the final thing that you have is just a UI where the user can upload an image so and that will display this image like this and tell you whether that is a dog or a cat and you can like use this idea and work on like different use cases so like predicting different animals or some any classification any image classifications and uh, yeah so that is all so I'll just give you a quick recap of all the things that we have done from the start the first is like we are importing this data set from Kaggle this dogs versus cats so this is the same of uploading the kaggle.json file and uh, configuring the path and then uh, extracting the data through api and then we are like extracting the zip file this docs versus cats.zip and train.zip and so on and counting that there are 25000 images of dogs and cats and then we are importing all the dependencies that we have and then displaying the image of dog using this matplotlib dot image module and image of cat and so on and then we we have seen that the first three letters have this dogs and the next three letters have this cat and so on and we use this to find how many dog images are there and how many cat images are there and saw that there are equal images number of dog images and cat images which is 12500 then the important task is we are resizing all the images so we are creating a new directory called as image uh, resize and then resizing the first 2000 images resizing it of dimension 224 comma 224 and saving it there in the, in the new folder that we have created and finally we are uh, displaying these images and seeing that these two images having the same size so we have resized all the images so the next step is to iterate through this resized folder and uh, create the labels for this so if it is a dog image we say the label should be one so we are doing this here and if the image starts with this cat we say the label is zero and then we have seen that there is an equal almost equal distribution of dogs and cat and then we uh, run this particular code snippet in order to read all this image files and convert it to a numpy array and later like uh, we have seen like there are like we took like 2000 images of this dimension and rgb images represented by three so next one is like this train test split so x train x test y train and y test so we are taking like 20 percentage as the test data and so on so 1600 images will be your training images and 400 images will be your test images and then we are like rescaling the images of 255 and so on okay so the next step is like building the neural network so we are taking this mobile net model mobile net v2 from this uh, particular link so this is the pre-trained model that we are using so you can just go through this code so we are just applying uh, you know adding like one output layer so this is nothing but two the number of classes that we have and this is a model summary and we are like compiling with adam optimizer and sparse categorical cause entropy and so on we have seen that we get a very good accuracy score Right, and then we have also seen that we got a test accuracy of almost 98 percentage and so on finally we built a predictive system where we can paste the path of the image and it will tell you whether that image is a dog or a cat okay so uh, that is all from my side and i hope that you have uh, you know understood all the things covered so make sure that you are practicing all the code by yourself and try to as i've told you try to build a ui for the same and, and that would be like very helpful for your portfolio okay. So that's it from my side and I'll see you in the next upload. Thanks for watching.